spot those who will tell the truth. Today's panelists are Susie Quattro, Tony Selby, Jill Gascoigne, and Derek Nimmo. And here's your host, Fred Dynage. She put me in my place, and some would say, not before time. Let's now meet three more people who want to play. Tell the truth. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is John Mander, and I've already privatised a lot of British Rail. Number two. My name is John Mander, and I've already privatised a lot of British Rail. Number three. My name is John Mander, and I've already privatised a lot of British Rail. Only one of these people is the real John Mander. And in part two, we'll find out which one has sworn to tell the truth. Welcome back to Tell the Truth and those three splendid gentlemen, all of whom claim they've already privatised a lot of British rail. This time, I think we're going to get the panel. I hope so. Anyway, open the envelopes and read the signed statement inside. It says, I, John Mander, collect railway honour. That is to say, anything and everything to do with railways except the train and tracks. I've been doing this for a number of years and my collection now fills a personal museum housed in my garden and a specially designed building. I collect memorabilia from all railway companies and have many rare items. I also edit and publish a monthly enthusiasts magazine and have just produced a book on the subject. Signed, John Mander. So, John Mander, is he one, two or three? The panel must tell me. Again, questions and answers they have until the hooter sounds and absolutely no demonstrations. We'll start at the other end this time with you, Derek Nimmo. What does GWR stand for, number Great. one? Great Western Railroad. Number two, LNER. L London and North Eastern Railway. N number three, where's the Royal Scott? It used to run between Where London is it? Where's it kept now? Pardon? Where's it kept now? It's kept in the museum Where? in East Anglia. Number one, where's it kept now? Uh, it's kept in the National Railway Museum at York. Where? At York. Number two, where's the coronation scot? It's been wrecked. Number one, where's the coronation scot? It has been wrecked. Number three, where's the coronation scot? Very few parts of it still remain in railway owner collections. Well, who was the first man killed by a train, number one? Uh, and then... Time is up, Derek. Jill Gascoigne. Um, number one, when did the last steam engine run? Uh, in regular passenger service, uh, 1964. Number two, when did the last steam engine run? 1964. Number three? 1968. Right. Are there, are there, number one, how many carriages are there in a usual passenger train? Does it, uh... Is it, it different, whatever they are? It varies, it's impossible it to say. Even with the intercity carriages? I don't know very much about modern day trains, I'm afraid. Oh, I see, so you're just uh, the old ones as well. Do you know anything about modern day trains, number two? A little. Number three? A certain amount. So, how, number three, how, how many, how much, what collection, what sort of year does it go up to, your collection of things? Up to approximately the beginning of uh, British Rail's time. Thank you, Jill. Tony Selby. Uh, number one, do you know anything about the Mallard? Uh, a certain amount. Dark, yes. No, the Mallard. You, <laughs> the Mallard train. Yes, it's an A4 Pacific locomotive. Mm -hmm. Do you know what colour it is at this present time? Uh, at the moment, I believe it's blue. And number two, the same question. Do you know what colour the Mallard is? It's blue at present time. Number three? Yes, that is correct. And do you know where it is at the moment? Not or at where this it runs? very moment. It's probably in the NRM. Right. Number two, have you ever ridden on the Mallard? Unfortunately, no. No? Why not? Just haven't been able to get up onto the footplate to try very hard. But number one, have you ever ridden on it? No, I've seen it, but I haven't ridden You've on it. You've seen it? 
Why not? Why haven't you ridden on it? It still does quite a few journeys. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're an aggressive <laughs> lot, aren't they? Susie, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you No, I'm not. I just know um, about that if one. I was to ask you, number one, what the El Capitan is, could you tell me? Not a fan. No, number two? I couldn't tell you. Number three. Sorry, could I have that again? The El Capitan. El Capitan uh, was, uh, I believe, um, a, a locomotive and train in the United States. Okay, thank you. And um, number one, the Orient Express, do you know when that first began? Uh, in the 1920s. And number two, do you know when it was remodeled and set back on the tracks again? I can't remember the date exactly. It was within the last five years. Do you know number three? The same answer I would give, yes. Within, within the, last the last five, five years, years or so. And what, which would you say had the more ornate, number three again, um, inside in the coaches? Was it American trains or English trains? Which one went to more trouble? It really depends. It's a fascinating little battle, this, isn't it, between the two sides? But it's make your mind up time now for our panel. They're looking for John Mander, the real John Mander. Do you know at home, do you think it's number one, perhaps? Or do you think it's number two? Or do you think it's number three? Panel, tell me. Derek Nimmo. Well, John Mander, uh, I would like to say, was number one, but he seems a little too young, really, but he seems to be the most knowledgeable to me, so I'm going to go for number one. Number one. J Jill Gascoigne. I have to say that I haven't got a clue. Well, that's very honest admission. <laughs> Not a clue, and so I'm just going to say number three. Number three, OK. Tony Selby. Well, I'm going to go with my dear friend Jill. I'll go for number three. Number three. And Susie Quattro. Well, I think that's on the right track. <laughs> I'm going to go for number three as well. Number three. Because he knew what the El Capitan, he knew yes. it was in America. It's a two-story train, by the way. Well, we'll see. Three go for number three, one goes for number one, none for number two. OK, let's put you out of your suspense. Will the real John Mander please stand up? I can't look. I'll just keep it. It's three. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done, Susie, Tony and Jill, all of whom got that one right. I think our imposters did well because this is quite a technical subject and the panel, as it turned out, seemed to know quite a bit about it. So, imposter number one, what's your real name? Uh, my name's Tony Lorva. And what do you actually do? I'm a lighting designer. Do you know anything about trains? Very little. You did jolly well. And imposter number two? My name's Bernard Smith and I'm an architect. Do you know anything about trains? Only toy trains. I think they were magnificent, <laughs> don't you, ladies and gentlemen? Really did well. We shall see them again in a moment for One to One, but now the real John Mando. We have a photograph of you, John, with some of your many pieces of memorabilia. What would you say is your most valuable item? The most valuable item is a cast iron sign, about two and a half feet by two feet. It says on the top of the wooden post, and it nodded at passing trains occasionally for perhaps 100, 120 years. Nobody really knows. By some great act of God, it was saved from the cutter's torch and uh, protected from the, the demolition gang. It therefore remains as the only uh, marked artifact from the Y Valley Railway. How did this start? Were you a train spotter as a boy? All railway iron collectors uh, began as avid train spotters and graduated gradually as soon as the great steam giants went mostly to their graves. We looked around and we had to find something else to do. We realized that there were thousands and thousands of great artifacts and we would content ourselves with those. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for coming on Tell the Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, John Mander.